Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be trying to explain ROC and AUC metrics in a very intuitive way because I think most of the ways that they show online just tell you that it's a graph between the true positive rate and the false positive rate, which is true, but uh, I don't think it's very intuitive and makes a lot of sense. Whereas the idea of this actually is pretty intuitive. So I'm just trying to show you how you can actually come to that conclusion. So first thing, ROC stands for Receiver Operating Characteristic Curve, and AUC is the area under that ROC curve. So let's start off with what exactly the ROC curve represents. So instead of actually, you know, showing you the formula, what we're going to do is we're going to build it up from scratch. And before that, one thing I have to be very clear about is that these metrics, ROC and AUC, only work for binary classification cases. So let's say you have multiple labels. This is not going to work. It only works when you have binary cases, so either positive or negative per se, right? Okay, cool. So let's actually start out by building our very own ROC curve. So what I'm going to do is now the y-axis is going to keep track of the true positives we have, and the x-axis is going to keep track of the false positives. Now, what does this actually mean? So true positives is something that we have predicted to be positive, and it's actually positive as well. So the predicted value is positive, and it's actually a positive as well. And a false positive is where we predicted it to be positive, but it's actually a negative. So even though it's actually a negative, we falsely predicted it as a positive. Cool, so we're gonna start off with this, and we're gonna kind of see, so let's say we're given these, our model has made these classifications. So first, we've classified a plus and then a minus, and then let's say we classify two pluses and then two minuses. So how exactly can we form the ROC curve for this? So what I'm actually gonna do over here is I'm first gonna build the curve, and then I'm gonna kind of explain why this works and what it actually represents. So essentially what we're gonna do is every time we have a positive, we're gonna go up one step, and every time we have a negative, we're gonna to move to the right by one step. So first we have a positive. So first we go over here at one. Then we have a negative. So we move to the right and over here. So at x is equal to one. Then we have two positives. So first we go up by one. So we're at two. And then we go up one more. And now we're at three. And then we have two negatives. So we move one to the right. And then we move one more to the right. Cool, now let's try to understand what does this actually mean? So over here, we have, we have some sort of model, and our model has made us these predictions. So essentially, what we want to see is by changing the threshold values, how exactly is it going to affect the separability of our model, right? So the ROC kind of represents how separable are the classifications we've made. So let's actually try to better understand that. So in the very beginning, we're gonna assume that we have a threshold over here. So everything to the left of this is gonna be considered positive. Now in this case, we only care about the stuff that has been predicted as positive because we only care about true positives and false positives. So in this case, that means we have zero true positives and zero false positives. Well, we can see that on the graph. So let's just keep moving our threshold. So let's say our threshold is now over here. So everything, again, same thing. Everything to the left is positive. Everything to the right is negative. It's the same logic, okay? So over here, we have one positive, and that is also predicted as a positive. So that means we have one true positive. So that's why over here, you can see, we have one true positive and zero false positives. Perfect. So we just keep doing this with the rest of the samples. So now let's say the threshold is over here. So now we have one true positive, and once one false positive. So that can be represented here. One true positive, one false positive. Perfect. And we just keep doing this, right? So uh, let me just go through a few more instances. So let's say the threshold is over here. So now we have two true positives and two, one false positive, right? So two true positives and one false positive. Perfect. And finally, like over here, you would have three true positives, one false positive. And now the more you go, so over here you would have three true positives, two false positives. And finally, if you have a threshold at the very ending, you're going to have three true positives and three false positives, which is right over here. So this essentially represents how these, 
true positive and false positive values change when you change the threshold accordingly. So what can we actually get out of this graph? So I think one important thing to note is that let's say this over here is our threshold. We're going to actually end up having three true positives and only one false positive. So now when you move this threshold to the right over here or over here, you're only going to increase the number of false positives. So that means that moving the threshold past that is probably not a good option. But now let's actually get into what the AUC is. So like the name suggests, AUC is area under curve. So just to make it more obvious and easier to calculate, uh, I'm just going to kind of divide it into boxes. So the number of total boxes we have is going to be three by three. And we have a total of nine boxes. And in this case, how many boxes are under the curve? So over here, we have one box. Over here, we have one, two, three. Uh, this is the fourth. This is the fifth sixth and seven. So there are seven boxes under the curve and we want to normalize this value. So seven divided by the total boxes is nine. And this over here is going to be the value of the area under the curve. So this is the normalized value. And I think this comes up to around 0 0.78, something like that, right? So seven by nine is the AUC in this case. And again, like I said, this represents how separable these two values are. So now by itself, I don't think it means much, but it, it means a lot when you compare it with other values. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a look at another set of examples. So now let's say we have plus, 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 minus, minus, minus. Okay. So this is the uh, predictions another model has made. So we're going to do the same thing and build our ROC curve again. So we have one plus, so we go up by one. Then we have another plus, so we go up again, and then we go up again, right? And now we have three minuses. So one year, one year, and one year. Now in this case, when you look at it, we have nine boxes under the graph, and well, the total boxes are nine. So over here, we have an AUC of one. So what exactly does this mean? So the area under the curve represents all of the boxes. Everything is under the graph itself. And what this essentially is telling us is that there is some threshold over here where we can perfectly separate the positives and the negatives, right? And that threshold is over here, right? So if this is our threshold and you make everything to the left as positive, well, you end up guessing everything correct. Everything to the left is positive and you're not going to have any false positive. So this means our data is perfectly separable. We have a AUC of one, and this is how the ROC curve looks like when the area under the curve is one. Okay, now just for the sake of it, so the assumption we made here was that everything, so first we have positives and then we have negatives. So let's just say we did the opposite. So let's say we had negative, 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 and then positive, positive, positive. So another model made these classifications. So in this case, our ROC curve would look something like this. So move to the right uh, three times, and then we move up three times, right? So this is what it's going to look like. Now, the area under the curve for this is, well, it's zero, right? And so zero divided by nine, obviously zero, right? So the AUC here is zero. What does that mean? So having the AUC of zero essentially means that you have perfectly gotten everything wrong. Everything you guessed is completely wrong. So essentially what you can do is since it's a binary classification problem, you can just take the opposite. So wherever you guess true, well, you can just guess false and vice versa. Right? So usually when you have an AOC close to zero, you might have uh, misidentified the labels or you might not have identified them properly. So that could be a reason for that. And if you just flip it around, you would get a AUC of one. Well, that's not always the case, but that is a possible reason for it. And finally, let's look at one last case, which is when you have a AUC of 0 0.5. So this is a pretty important number. And let me just show you what this looks like. So over here, the AUC is 0 0.5. And if you want to look at it numerically, uh, this would be one, two, three boxes. So combine these two and make it four and 4.5. So essentially 4.5 by nine, which is equal to one half. So over here, you have a AUC of one half. And what this represents, this represents a completely random uh, model, right? So it's just guessing randomly with a 50% chance whether something is positive or negative. So this is what a completely random model is going to look like. You're going to have a AUC of 0 0.5. Now to better explain that, I have a small uh, animation that I've found. I'll put a link to this in the description. So let's say 
over here, I have a very high AUC, right? So as you can see with the ROC curve over here, we had a really high AUC. It's not one, but it's pretty close to that. So in this case, the distribution of the negatives and the positives has a very small overlap, right? There's a, there's a threshold here and the overlap is pretty small. It's not very noticeable. So let's just move it halfway through. So in this case, there is a good amount of overlap, about half the values, for example, are being overlap. And it's not a proper threshold which splits them perfectly. And now let's actually decrease it all the way. And over here, what actually happened, if you just go through it step by step, you can see that what's happening is that the negative distribution ends up becoming the same as the positive distribution. Now, when you have two samples that are coming out of the exact same distribution, there's no proper way to tell the difference. So at that point, you might as well just be making a random guess. And as you can see over here, we have a AUC of 0.5. So when the AUC is 0.5, that means, well, you have a random generating model. It's completely random. And you want your model to obviously perform better than 0.5. So something around the range of 0.8, it's considered as a good AUC value. So what I want to do quickly, so that's the basic idea. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I found this explanation a lot more intuitive. And now let's just uh, kind of tie them all together. So essentially uh, in the actual ROC curve, you're going to be plotting the true positive rate versus the false positive rate. So we took the absolute values. Instead, we're just going to take the rate of it, right? So that's the only difference over there. And uh, just to show you another example. So let's say we have uh, these target predictions and we have some class values with it. So let's say that we have one, zero, one, zero. And just to make it simple, this is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0 0.8. So this is the models of prediction. So class scores, right? So these are the scores that our model has given it. Now we want to kind of look for a threshold for this, right? So, we're, so essentially this is how we would actually form our ROC curve of using this and find the AUC value. So you have these. And what you're, what you're going to do is you're going to look at different thresholds, okay? So in this case, well, we can kind of see that it's divided by 0 0.2 each step. So let's just start off with 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0, okay? So essentially, what we're going to look at is at each of these thresholds, how is the true positive rate, sorry, true positive and false positive is going to change. So let's just draw that graph as well, just in case. So on the y-axis, we have the true positives and then false positives on x. Cool. So let's just do this real quickly. So let's say our threshold is zero. So we're going to take everything greater than or equal to the threshold as a positive, okay? So in this case, well, everything greater than or equal to zero, so that means all of these are end up predicted as positive. So over here, we have two true positives and two false positives. So essentially that would just be two comma two. So I'll just write this as false positive comma true positive. So two comma two, right? And for 0 0.2, that's gonna be the same case, right? So two comma two. Now for 0 0.4, this is going to be our range of values. So all of these are going to be predicted as positive. And from that, we have only one true positive and two false positives, okay? And now we move on to 0 0.6. So that's one and one. So one true positive, one false positive. And at 0 0.8, well, this is a zero, so that's actually just gonna be one true positive. Sorry, uh, zero true positives and one false positive. So zero true positive and one false positive. And finally, at a threshold of one, well, none of these are actually predicted as zero. So we have zero false positives and zero true positives. Sorry, I meant to say none of these are predicted as one, not zero, sorry. So now we take these values and we plot them, right? So we have 0, uh, 1, and 2, and same on the x-axis, 0, 1, and 2. So first we have something at 2, comma 2, or 2, comma 2 again, then we have 2, comma 1, then we have 1, comma 1, then 1, comma 0, and then 0, comma 0. Oh, sorry, 1, comma 0. So 1, comma 0, and then 0, comma 0. There we go. So this is our ROC curve. And the area under this curve, well, it's pretty straightforward. This is going to be uh, one, and we have a total of four blocks, right? So this is just gonna be one by four. So our AUC is gonna be 0 0.25.
Now, just to kind of, so this is how you would actually find it out. So you'd look at different threshold values and you would calculate its false positive rate and its true positive rate and plot that on the given points, right? So that is the approach you would actually do. And I'm pretty sure scikit-learn and other models use something similar, right? And uh, just to kind of show you, our method actually works the same way. So in this case, what we did is we took values greater than or equal to the threshold. So what we have to do is we have to arrange the targets in descending order. So 0 0.8 first, and then 0 0.6, 4, and then 2. So we'd have 0, 1, 0, 1. And the reason for that is because what we did in our approach is we took everything less than the threshold as positive. So we just need to do the opposite. So that's where we're taking it in descending order over here. And over here, you're going to have the exact same logic, right? So when I said zero, you move to the right and one, you go up. So you move one to the right, then you go one up, then one to the right and one up. You get the exact same ROC curve and you're going to get the exact same AUC value. So hopefully this explanation was a lot more intuitive and easier to understand. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And do let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.